Every time I've seen a top things to do in Dallas video, or researched it on Google, or researched it on TripAdvisor, nine times out of 10, I see visit the Reunion Tower, or visit the Museum of Art, or visit the Museum of Nature and Science. There are many of us realtors on YouTube, and admittedly, there's a pressure to be polished. And you'll notice that some of us cover this stuff like we're presenting to the Harvard Board of Trustees, instead of some real people just looking for some fun stuff to do in Dallas. And hey, don't get me wrong, these are some fun things to do as well. We'll just cover them towards the end of the video. But if you're like me, married with kids, into music, sports, and outdoors, there's definitely some more things you must add to the list on top things to do in Dallas. After all, if your kids are driving you crazy, you and your spouse might sometimes might want to have an adult beverage. And you can't have an adult beverage at the Museum of Nature and Science. Today we're covering a more realistic view of the top things to do in Dallas. Whether you're single or married, have kids or don't have kids. There's a reason what I'm about to cover has no parking spots left in the parking lots, and that's because everyone's doing these top things to do in Dallas. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Mike Harrison. I'm a licensed realtor in Texas and in Florida, and I've helped many clients buy and sell right here in North Texas. If you wanna know what it's like to work, live, and play in the Dallas Metroplex, go ahead and subscribe, support the channel, and stay tuned for videos every single week. And as I thank you for subscribing, of course, here's the star of the show, my dog Rocky, saying thank you. Rocky, come say thank you. Wanna say thank you? <laughs> you mad today? Not in the mood today? Not in the mood today? I don't think he's in the mood. Well, uh, yeah, that dude ain't in the mood today. It's hot out here. Uh, he is not saying thank you today. And by the way, just as we get started, forewarning, I am sneezing every three to four seconds. And so if there's a few more cuts than usual, forgive me. It's uh, towards the end of May and my allergies are killing me. Let's dive right into the top things to do in Dallas. The first on the list, of course, we're in Dallas, so you know we're gonna go ahead and cover the great sports scene right here in Dallas, Texas. Dallas is one of only four cities in the whole country with a pro sports team representing the four major sports leagues here in the States with the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Mavericks, Texas Rangers, and the Dallas Stars. And also, you know if you've been watching my other videos that I am from the Dallas area. So I am a devout Dallas sports fan and I love the sports culture here. But that being said, we're gonna go in reverse order today on the Dallas sports scene than what you might think. Let's start with some good news stories of the Dallas sports scene. As of filming this video, the Dallas Stars are in the Western Conference Finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs after another great season. And also as of filming this video, the Texas Rangers just made some major moves in the offseason and are number one in the AL West at 27 and 17. And as of filming this video, the Dallas Mavericks didn't even make the NBA playoffs this year. That's right, after having high hopes for making the Western Conference Finals last year, Luka and company fell short at just 38 and 44 this year with an 11th ranking in the Western Conference. One of the many reasons I love going to these Mavericks games is it doesn't matter where you sit, the experience is still gonna be great. Upper level seating can be anywhere as low as $40. Mid level seating can be between $250 and $550. And then lower level seating can go up from there. I was actually two rows back from courtside earlier this year whenever the Mavericks played the Clippers and those tickets were only $350. So it's just like anything else, it depends on supply and demand. Last but not least, well, in our hearts anyway, because they've been bull the last 25 years, is as of filming this video, the Dallas Cowboys and their fans are still hoping and praying for another Super Bowl. Finishing second in the NFC East at 12 and five, and uh, losing against the, I can't even freaking say it, <laughs> losing against the San Francisco 49ers for the second year in the row in the playoffs. But hey, you know we're winning the Super Bowl this year, right? I swear, uh, I swear, uh, us Cowboys fans, us delusional Cowboys fans, we keep the sports media employed by giving them plenty to make fun of throughout the year. And just like our other sports teams, the ticket prices largely depend on who we're playing against and what time of year it is. You can get in for as low as $75 to, well, it's Jerry's world, so high can get high. Now that we've covered the Dallas sports scene, let's go ahead and see what the big fuss is about with Dallas amusement parks. To kick us off, you know we're starting in Arlington with Six Flags. You can get season passes for a family of five for around $300 or just pay the daily fee of around 60 to 80 bucks. Within one, maybe two square miles over there near Six Flags in Arlington, you can go to Hurricane Harbor on Thursday, catch a Ranger game on Friday, Six Flags on Saturday, and then catch a Cowboys game on Sunday. It's an awesome scene right there in Arlington. 
My six-year-old son, Jackson, is already riding the Texas Giant. I swear he has way more courage than I did, even at 12 years old. Titan, Batman, and Mr. Freeze are also some really popular rides there at Six Flags in Arlington. You can also get video footage of your crazy rides and adventures, so even your most skeptical friends will believe you rode these rides. Or if you have friends that call you out like my daughter tries to call me out by saying, that's cat, bro. Speaking of my amazing daughter, and she's probably gonna kill me for saying this, uh, but a, a fast, proud father plug, if you will. Today in her fifth grade award ceremony, she was honored with academic excellence, excellent attendance, and yet another leadership award. She's one of only a few that's been chosen for this leadership award every year since she began elementary school out of hundreds of kids in her grade. So Trinity, dad is super proud of you. Next, you have Adventure Landing in Dallas. Adventure Landing is a smaller theme park with a variety of attractions for people of all ages. There are go-karts and an 18-hole mini golf course. Also, friends can have a little fun with a round of laser tag or get a little wet with buffer boats. You can also try your luck at the batting cages where the speeds range between 35 and 60 miles per hour. Last but not least, we have the Legoland Discovery Center. The Legoland Discovery Center is the ultimate amusement park for Lego lovers. Here you'll witness awesome displays of Lego ingenuity created to reflect the Dallas landmarks and have opportunities to build and create with Legos as well. Uh, while this place is obviously designed for kids ages three to 10, adults usually have a blast there too. And right now it's the middle of May, it's getting pretty hot here in Texas and we know come June, July and August, temperatures can easily get in the triple digits. And so with that being said, you've got to check out the water parks here in Dallas. For starters, just like we talked about earlier in Arlington, we're going to go ahead and go straight from Six Flags in Arlington to Hurricane Harbor. Hurricane Harbor is my favorite water park in Dallas. And if you have the season pass to Six Flags, you can also take advantage of Hurricane Harbor underneath that season pass as well. And after Hurricane Harbor, we have the NRH2O Family Water Park. This park is ranked among the top water parks in the entire country, and it's situated between Dallas and Fort Worth right there in North Richland Hills. This park is on 17 acres and features over 22 water slides, a 660 foot long endless river, a 12,000 square foot wave pool, and a children's swimming hole complete with a five level water playground. Also home to the Green Extreme, the world's largest uphill water coaster, measuring over 1,100 feet long and 81 feet high. Aside from rides, guests can also play volleyball on a white sand beach and take a dip in a 5,300 square foot swimming pool. Be sure to keep an eye out for weekly events like music festivals, dive-in movie nights, and fireworks displays. This park is open weekends only from May 7th to 28th and then daily through August 14th. Next on this water park list, you've got to check out the Great Wolf Lodge right there in Grapevine, Texas. No matter what the weather is like outside, it's always a balmy 84 degrees inside this 80,000 square foot tropical paradise. As far as attractions go, the Great Wolf Lodge has it all. Seven pools, 12 water slide rides, plus a multi-level tree house tricked out with a boatload of interactive features. And in addition to this awesome indoor water park, the Great Wolf Lodge also has the Raccoon Lagoon, which is an outdoor water park open from Memorial Day through Labor Day. And now that we've had a chance to cover my favorite amusement and water parks, let's go ahead and check out the incredible concert scene right here in Dallas. My wife and I go to around 10 to 15 concerts every year. It's actually one of our favorite pastimes right here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, for starters, you have the Dos Equis Pavilion located over there on Grand Avenue in Dallas. You could purchase a summer pass where you can see some of the biggest names in the entertainment all summer long for only $200. You also see some big names head over there to the American Airlines Center in downtown Dallas, obviously at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. The Southside Ballroom near downtown Dallas is also another major spot. You also have the Toyota Music Factory. That's in Irving. That's been a big venue for artists the last few years. Um, and then you're also about an hour away from Choctaw Casino, and Choctaw hosts many concerts and comedy shows throughout the year. And like I said earlier, major artists come to Dallas all year long. We even just had Taylor Swift at AT&T Stadium for a two-night show maybe a month or two months ago, so of course my daughter was driving me crazy about that show. Um, and now my son Jackson, he is begging me to go take him to see uh, Post Malone at the Dos Equis Pavilion come August, but let's just go ahead and say he's uh, he's 
he's not quite old enough for that scene yet. So after you've had a good time at one of these concerts, get ready for some late days at one of the many great lakes around Dallas, Texas. To kick us off here, let's start with Lake Texoma. If you saw my Living in Sherman, Texas video, you know I've already covered this one in that video as well. This touches Denison, Pottsboro, and other small towns in North Texas about an hour north of Dallas. This is the largest man-made lake in Texas and one of the largest man-made lakes in the entire country. Great fishing, jet skiing, and all other water sports over here. Then you have Lake Louisville, 29,000 acres with 233 miles of shoreline over here. This is in Denton County and hosts Party Cove, which is one of the most popular lake spots in all of Dallas. Next you have Lake Ray Hubbard, located in Rockwall. This is close to 23,000 acres and touches the Dallas, Collin, and Rockwall counties. Lots of great shopping and dining around Lake Ray Hubbard over there in Rockwall at the harbor as well. Then you have White Rock Lake. This is located in Northeast Dallas and covers around 1,100 acres. It has White Rock Lake Trail and White Rock Creek Trail covering miles of walking trails. Jet skiing and boating with an engine aren't allowed here, but it's probably hosting the most popular walking trail in Dallas and is a popular kayaking spot. There are also lots of pavilions you can reserve if you want to host a party and your dogs will love the dog park. Now that we've covered the Dallas sports scene, amusement parks, concerts, and the lake days around Dallas, now we can cover what everyone else talks about as the best things to do here starting with the Dallas Arboretum, one of the premier places to visit in the Dallas area and considered one of the top botanical gardens in the world. This area has 66 acres of lush gardens and beautiful landscapes. It's the perfect place to spend a relaxing day with your spouse or to take mom out and show her how much you appreciate her. You can take a stroll through the gardens, enjoy the scenery, and even have a picnic. General admission pricing here ranges from $12 to $20. And next on this list is going to be visiting the Reunion Tower. The Reunion Tower is an iconic landmark in Dallas. You can take an elevator to the top and enjoy a 360 degree view of the city. It's especially beautiful at night when the city lights pop up. Next you have the Museum of Nature and Science. This is a stunning building that houses a variety of interactive displays and exhibits. From the moment you step inside, you'll be transported to a world of wonder and discovery, almost like you're at Interstellar. One of the most popular exhibits at the museum is the T. Boone Pickens Life Then and Now Hall, which takes you on a journey through the history of life on Earth. You'll see everything from dinosaurs to early humans and learn about the evolution of our planet over millions of years. The museum's location in downtown Dallas makes it easy to visit. You can spend a whole day exploring here. Plus, there are other restaurants and attractions nearby as well. Next on the list, we have the Dallas World Aquarium. The Dallas World Aquarium is a great place to take the kids. It has a variety of marine life, including sharks, stingrays, and even sea turtles. After that, you have the Dallas Museum of Art. The Dallas Museum of Art is a must visit for art lovers. It has an extensive collection of art from all around the world, including works by famous artists like Van Gogh and Monet. After that, you have the Dallas Zoo. The Dallas Zoo is one of the largest and most impressive zoos in the United States. With over 106 acres of land, it's home to more than 2,000 animals from 406 different species. From majestic elephants to playful penguins, there's something for everyone at the Dallas Zoo. So guys, that's gonna close us out on the top things to do in Dallas, Texas. Listen, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe, support the channel. And if you wanna know more about the lifestyle in a really popular Dallas suburb, go ahead and click here. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.